So uh, to get things working on screen, we'll need to look at the uh, bat, the bat size, which is the size of the tile map in VRAM, at the beginning of VRAM. But uh, before that, actually, here's the Charles McDonald's PC Engine Tech document, and uh, just a little aside about the raster compare register, where the uh, H-syncs happen. It explains here in pretty clear detail what we've already discovered. Uh, RCA, RCR values that are out of range are 0, 0 to 3F and 147 to 3FF, so that'll never cause a successful H-sync interrupt. And it explains here that uh, a value of 146 causes an interrupt at line 24 of the next frame at the start, you know, at the top of the screen. So that's what we've seen uh, in our demo. Um, and next, uh, so the VDC register 9 uh, handles memory width and sets the width of the uh, virtual map uh, or the uh, tile map on screen. Uh, so uh, the height has a single bit and the width has two bits. And so it explains here what the bits do. Uh, so basically for, for height, first of all, you have it either 32 rows high or 64 rows high. Uh, and then as far as width of the uh, tile map, uh, you can have three different settings. 32 characters wide, which means 256 pixels, 64 characters wide, which is 512, and then 128 characters wide, which is 1024 pixels. Uh, and so, uh, using these, uh, I've just made some very uh, simple constants here, bat width, bat height, and I've set, the, I've set them both to 32. And a written comment. You can set the choice as 32, 64, or 128. And the height you can set to 32 or 64. And I've made these so that uh, in our startup program, it already it already had hard coded values. Uh, it said db0910. But I've changed those so that when you set the constants here, bat width, bat height, um, uh, it'll automatically configure what gets written to the VDC on uh, initialization. So it probably could be done in a bit shorter way, but here the bat width uh, moves the bits around a bit and the height moves it to a single bit up here and then that should uh, automatically set it up. And of course you can change the uh, bat width uh, anytime in your program. Uh, I don't know if you can do it anytime on screen, I mean in the middle of a screen redraw, but yeah you can change it anytime you want but this will just set it up correctly at the start. And uh, I think right now we'll just have uh, 32 pixels wide and 32 pixels, I'm sorry, 32 tiles wide and 32 tiles uh, high. Uh, so we'll only have like a single screen's worth of tile map to start with. And we can make that wider or taller as time goes on. And uh, hopefully I'll set up my uh, uh, screen drawing uh, routines to actually use these constants to make it a bit easier for us to. And so to uh, store all our uh, routines that'll, that we'll use to draw to the screen, I've made a new uh, include file called graphics work, gfx work, in the includes directory. Uh, and right now it's blank. So we will fill, start filling this up with uh, the usual routines for uh, clearing a part of VRAM or the bat, uh, writing text, text to the screen, writing uh, hex uh, numbers to the screen, and then uh, writing some tiles and sprites to the screen as well. So we should include that graphics work in our main file, so um, at, at the end of all our stuff is probably fine, right around here. So put that there, leave some space. So, I'll include that graphics work file. Uh, and so, well, we start up our program here. Uh, 
VRAM could be full of junk, actually. It could be full of garbage. We didn't really uh, initialize it. So, but I'll, I'll be kind of lazy or and or efficient, and I'll just initialize the bat, first of all. Okay, so uh, around here. Well, we can do it after loading the graphics. Uh, could be dangerous, but well, we'll do that first. So clear bat. So this will be a first, our first routine here, and graphics work. So graphics routines that I write, as opposed to the library, magic hit library will go here. So clear bat. There we go. So, if you make a new subroutine, you should always at least put in dummy RTS at the very end, just so you don't just so you don't forget later. Okay. So, set the uh, VRAM write register to zero. Uh, I'm sorry. First, you use uh, zero as the VRAM write register, and store zero as a word means you set the address to write to VRAM address zero zero zero, and then so I'm just doing this manually here, to ready for writing. Okay, and so um, let's see, we're going to cycle through uh, a certain number of x values, a certain number of y values. I guess that can be. Horizontal and vertical. And, uh, this, these are the values that we will fill the bat with when we initialize it. And um, just to give you an example of to see what it looks like, I will do it 41. That means, of course, uh, capital letter A. Copy that. That's it. So this will clear the bat with uh, this word, uh, or it'll write this word to uh, VRAM as many number of times as x times y. So we will need to get uh, the values here. So we've got to do, do a little thinking and math. Let's see, how many rows and columns do we clear? Well, actually, uh, my math is bad, sorry. It's the number of width, it's the bat width times bat height. That's simple. So, there. We just do bat width times bat height, and then uh, it's, it'll be a 16 bit value, so we do the low 8 bits into x and the high 8 bits into y. And let's try assembling this. This should fill the screen. With no errors. Should fill the screen with the letter A. Fingers crossed. There it is. <laughs> the graphics are filled with letter A. And this is, uh, let's see, 32 times 32. Um, that should be 0400. Or 0200. What is that? Let's see, VRAM. Yeah, so it fills it up to oh yeah, 0400. No, sorry. <laughs> right, 400 words. And that means 0800 bytes. So, yeah, VRAM gets filled exactly with that. Okay, so that's our test case. So, of course, we will change this to 20. Of course, that's a shortcut for blank space, white space character. Yes, yeah, so we filled our, our bat with a white space character that should not have any garbage anywhere. And that's our first routine to clear the bat. Um, and next, just to put something on the screen, I think we will, after clearing the bat, we'll print a byte on the screen. We will print a hex value. And so let's see. Uh, it can be anything in hex, so I'll, uh, I'll do 
to 5c just for fun and make a new subroutine called print byte. Of course, print byte has to take the lower nibble, uh, or the higher nibble, and print that as hex, hexadecimal, and take the lower nibble and print that also as hexadecimal. So we can also have a print nibble routine as half of it. I'll call it print nib. Okay. Okay, we're going to restore A, and we're going to, uh, there, we're going to make sure that it doesn't get trashed if you want to print multiple copies of the same byte. It's a tiny bit wasteful, I mean, you could do this faster, but this is what we'll do for now. So, we have a bright byte in A, and we got to, um, let's do A, of course we have to shift down the high nibble. And unfortunately, the 6502 doesn't have any quick instruction to do this. You got to do it LSR four times. Character, let's see. Oh, right, we've got to figure out where in VRAM we are. Our, our hexadecimal uh, values are. So let's see, it's, it's uh, character number 100 plus 10, so it's 110, that's our hexadecimal. So we've got to add about 110 to the uh, nibble that we have here. So let's make some constants for that first. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, so in our constants, we should have point to our ASCII table in VRAM. And that was 1000. Okay. X VRAM. This guy. There we go. So we're pointing to the offset in our graphics in VRAM, where the uh, hex can start. Okay, and so now, just a second. So here, uh, let's see, let's start the character number. constant and divide that by 16. So let's, that would change it to the tile number instead of the VRAM address. Okay, so we take our, our high nibble, shift it down, then add it to it where the font for hexadecimal starts. That's the, probably the simplest way to do it. And we also have to write to uh, the high byte in VRAM. Uh, sorry, in uh, yeah, in VRAM that sets the color and so on. So zero zero. This is the uh, font color, the palette number. And store that. 
to video plus one is the high byte. Okay, and then we'll repeat that with the low byte. So we pull our original byte, and then well, we'll push it again just for an entry point for the printing nipple, and we'll do the same thing. So we get our high byte again, or we get our full byte again. Then we have to uh, sorry, and it with OF just to isolate the low the low nipple. And I think we'll just copy these again. And print byte is finished. So hopefully, hopefully this should clear the screen with the space and then print the number. What did I do? Number five. Five C. Just just because. So let's check it out. Did it crash? Does it work? No, it works fine. Let's see. Oh right, stupid me. I forgot to set the address for writing. So right here. I didn't even point to the uh, uh, bat at all. So let's make it 020. So a second line down. DI. That should do it, I think. There we go. So there is 5C on screen. Our first text or whatever put on screen. And I'll test print nibble as well, so... Let's try... 2, 3. Okay, so right here. Um, nib, that's what it's called. I'm going to have it print the nibble, low nibble only, so it should print, no, it should skip the zero, it should print one, two, three on screen. So that's how you can have only the lower nibble printed. So if it prints one, two, three on screen, it should work fine. One, two, three. And the next step is, well, we have this uh, three nibbles printed. Let's let's actually print this on screen. How about that? So instead of anything, something like that. So H incline plus one. Get the high byte, high byte or high nibble first, and load that. Load the low nibble, and now we have a readout on the screen of where our H-sync trigger happens. So that is the purpose of printing hex. Oh, that doesn't work. Ha, my mistake. We gotta move this. Let's move this into our V-sync routine. Bye-bye. Of course, things that get up updated every V-blank, we gotta actually have it happen in V-blank. There. Okay, so there we can have a numerical readout of where H sync triggers, and that is the start for just checking out and having you know having feedback from our program, and we'll use that for something else later probably. But anyway, printing hex on screen is a useful routine to have. So next what we're going to do is print some text on screen. So we need to define that text first. Uh, I'll put it down here. And uh, let's see. Just do define byte and then type some text. It's all uppercase, so that's what I'll do. Oh, 
text. And usually if you're printing text on screen you gotta know how much screen space it takes up, so usually right above the text I just have it count the number of characters starting at zero. So you know they're gonna be uh, hex 20 characters across to make a 32 tile across screen. So. Alright, so that's 32 characters exactly. See down here. And actually, this is our first on screen text. It, it fills up the whole screen width. And so, well, if you want to do another line downwards, uh, you would either have to put in a bunch of spaces or do our, uh, an end line character or symbol, which your printing routine has to trap and then change the VRAM address, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to have it continue at the next line. And so probably right after this we're going to print the uh, uh, the nibble and hex readout for our scanline split. So this will be a placeholder right here. Okay, and we just do comma zero right there. Do zero terminate it. So we have some intro text uh, just to uh, demonstrate our ASCII printing routine, and so then we'll have to add that to graphics work as well. Uh, you'll have to make a printing routine. text and uh, we'll say uh, SI points to um, and right at the start of print text we have we'll set the right set right to the VRAM address so we should comment that DI address. And probably if you want to skip this, if you want to skip the VRAM address writing, just do that. Alright, so our low byte that we'll read from the text routine will be the ASCII character to do, and then their high byte will be the uh, bank and video RAM, or the color palette and video RAM location. So, again, it's going to be the palette plus that palette 0, 1000 VRAM, wherever ASCII RAM is right now. an SI. Indexed by Y. And if it's that terminating zero, we'll just finish it. We're not going to print this. That means it's the end of string, of course. If it is valid, we'll store that as is into video data. We've got that X as well. We'll keep this constant in X every time. We'll increment whatever's at SI, and that's it. Loop infinitely until it reaches zero. And that is a simple text printing routine. All right, let's see if it works. All right, so we've got print text working. Uh, video data plus one. Shouldn't forget that. 
sort of the low byte, which is the hex ASCII value, and the high byte, which is the palette and tile bank value. So if you do data plus one. Okay. So right around here, we're going to store the address of intro text. And actually, I should fix this. Yeah, this data DB statement should start offset from the left side. You need a space there. Otherwise, it thinks it's a label. So intro text. Uh, after clearing the bat, this is where we will print on screen. So store the literal address of intro text to SI. Text string. I think I'll have it start at 0020 in the bat, and that'll be the second line on screen. Print on screen. And then jump to our print text routine. Alright, uh, one more thing I think to worry about. It starts at 0020, but or hex readout here also does that, so they're going to overwrite each other. So one line down is 40. I guess I'll just shove it over to the right side of the screen. I think that would be 5D. We'll just shove that there for now. So let's assemble this and see if it works okay. okay no errors. Yeah, okay, so this is our first on-screen text that prints. Scanline split now at XXX, and here we have the scanline split readout printing again. Uh, so let's move that back over a bit. It has to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 characters. So actually, D minus 6 would be um, um, 7, I think. My math is not so good. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So we we have the we have those xxx markers totally overwritten, and that's that's kind of a good way to point or to to guide us on the screen where we're supposed to write our hex readouts. Okay. So on to the next step, which is uh, printing our bonk tiles on screen. So next, before we go any further, we'll need to add a few more constants here and maybe fix up our code a little bit. I'll, I'll do it quickly enough. Uh, we have our ASCII RAM pointed to, uh, and so we'll do the same thing for the bonk background. That was at 2000. Okay, and I actually have this guy hiding here. We're going to use that as well. So the VRAM location for our sprite attribute block uh, is going to change as well. I think the default in Magic Kit or yeah, Magic Kit basically is uh, 7F00, so red the end of VRAM. But um, if your uh, block map, uh, your bat file, is uh, not full size, it's not going to take all up all of the uh, lowest amount of VRAM. So you can put your sprite, attri sprite attribute block uh, VRAM location a lot lower. So I put it OFO. We'll use that a bit later. So our bonk BG and bonk SP, we can actually change those uh, VRAM locations down here instead of having it hard coded. Like that, and that should work fine. This is sprites. Use the SP. SP. And this one was ASCII. 
So we change these, uh, you know, kind of magic or confusing numbers to actual labels of constants, and that's a lot easier. And you don't have to change them every time inside your code. You can just change it at the top of your assembly file here. So I'll search through my other listings to see if I have any other addresses I need to fix up. Okay, so after printing printing text on screen, we should draw some graphics on screen. So let's make a new routine. Draw our bonk background. So that's going to happen down here. So this one will draw a 16 by 16 tile box with graphics on screen. All right, so um, first we'll need to write to uh, VRAM, so somewhere down the screen. Um, Let's see, 20, 40, 60, 80. 80 might be it enough. Let's see. Um, all right. Probably that would be good. But that's that'll start at the very left hand side of the screen. So you if you you have 32 uh, tiles across and it's 16 by 16 in the middle of the screen, so uh, 32 take away 16 is 16. And so to center it on screen you divide that 16 by 2 and you so you have 8 spaces on the left side and the right side, so that means E8. So that's the logic in centering something on screen. DI. So if you do DI and then set right, it's kind of understood. Set VRAM address. This is probably the last time I commented, probably. Okay, so next, where are bonk tiles again? And they're in VRAM at, uh, well, we've set it a constant for VRAM, so it's 2000, but, so here's palette 0, it's actually our font palette, and then palette 1, as you can see here, PBN1, there one, is our palette for this bonk background, so we actually need to point to the second palette. So we'll set up a constant here. the word. Um, first, instead of palette 0, it'll be palette 1 times 1,000. So that'll be, well, the uh, palettes are the top nibble of the um, VRAM, the tiles in VRAM, uh, in the, on the, in the bat definition. And so palette 1 plus BG VRAM. So that's the VRAM address. We'll divide it by 16 to get the tile number. Okay, and that should store that literal value. So the VRAM, or the tile number plus its palette definition, put that in SI. And we'll use SI to write to VRAM data. PAL1 plus tile. We'll do this in decimal 16, load y with 16, that's our bonk 0, that's the outer loop. So vertical, so 16 vertical lines. That's our inner loop. Just to make it a bit clearer. Okay. 
So that's generally what drawing boxes is on screen. You, you have to set up uh, two loops, two, uh, a nested loop, with the uh, horizontal on the in inner uh, loop and then the vertical on the outer loop. And if you need to actually skip a number of tiles, uh, you have to do that too. You have to have two inner loops. But uh, this is what we'll do, do for now. Okay, so we'll have a load X16. Our inner loop will just store directly what's in SI. So we, we have this constant value here for our first tile into video data. Lay down tile definition. And then we just increment SI and it just goes to the next tile number. So this is a really dumb way of just drawing a whole 8k of uh, tiles to the screen. Just uh, increment the tile number like this. We just increment x and do it for 16 lines. I'm sorry, 16 characters. So one horizontal line of uh, tiles has been laid down, but we need to go to the next next uh, line on screen. So you could if you want to do another loop here which draws blank tiles, but I'm just going to change the VRAM address. This one that we have right here, it's still in DI. And I'm not going to have it just do 16. We have our constant for bat width. We use it. We add the bat width to DI. And so if we change our bat width, this should uh, make it adjust so that it goes to the next line no matter what our width is. Go to the next line. And then finally we go back to the, our first loop. So let's draw the bonk background and hopefully that should work. So let's save and see if it works. All right, and it works fine. So we have our bonk background on screen there in the center of the screen. Uh, and let's just look at have a look at VRAM to see what we actually have written on screen. So here's VRAM. And you can actually see the ASCII text here, but there are bytes in between each of them. And that's because uh, each uh, bat tile entry is uh, two bytes. It's one word large. The low byte is the uh, uh, low 256 tiles, and then the uh, uh, low four bits of the next byte is the uh, higher uh, VRAM address. So uh, to combine it makes uh, 0154, which is uh, the T character. And then the top nibble of the second byte is the uh, palette number. So of course, ASCII is using palette zero. This one here, palette zero, the yellow and red. And then if we scroll down, uh, we can see, yeah, over here, starting at uh, 1DO, our uh, bonk background. And that's uh, starting at tile number 200, and that's 2000 hex in VRAM. So to change from a VRAM address to a tile number, you divide it by 16. So 2000 divided by 16 is 200. And then the top nibble here, number one, is palette number one. So it has palette one and tile 200, and then tile 201, 202, 203, all the way down until we get to the end. So to FF. All right, so this works. And the final step that we'll have in this video is uh, getting some sprites on the screen. OK, so sprites. Well, as you probably know, uh, sprites are movable graphic objects 
on video game hardware. And uh, on the PC Engine, they can be as small as 16 by 16 pixels large, or go all the way up to 32 by 64 pixels large. Uh, and this picture that I think Tomatheus made uh, illustrates the VRAM layout for where sprite graphics come from when you make a sprite that's of varying sizes. This will become important later when we actually look at the sprites that we put on screen. Um, so we're going to set up a 32 by 32 sprite. We're going to do two of them, you know, the bonk and the chikku. Uh, and so it's addressed by its starting cell and then uh, the video hardware automatically uh, positions the next uh, 16 by 16 uh, graphic squares to the to the right or to the uh, below our first starting cell, and we're gonna have to watch out for that for you know our next sprite. Uh, our bonk will have to be at address one, and then our chikun will need to be at address five, not address two or three or four or whatever. So, it's an interesting chart. Uh, hopefully, I'll try to I'll try to link to it. Uh, when I put this video up. So, well, how do we get sprites on screen? It's a tiny bit convoluted. I think I've explained it already. Um, we should keep a buffer in RAM for our sprite definition table. And then if we move sprites uh, every V blank, we should copy our sprite definition table, which is in RAM, copy that to VRAM. And then we set the hardware to automatically copy from VRAM to its own internal sprite uh, attribute RAM uh, area. So it's a two-step process. Now first, uh, in our startup ASM file, uh, the VRAM location is 7F00, as indicated by register 13 in the VDC. We're going to actually change that, so I have it already here. So address 13 of the video register, and we're going to have that point to the SATB RAM, VRAM, this constant which we set up already, right at the top here. So SATB VRAM will be now at 0F00, where to put the sprite table in VRAM. Okay, so that'll set up the uh, copying at least correctly. Okay, and in our tutorial uh, file, we have the zero page RAM variables here. We need to set up non zero page variables, uh, and that's called BSS. So ZP is zero page, and BSS, uh, well, buffer storage or something like that. <laughs> Not sure what it means. Uh, and that'll be higher RAM variables. And the sp sprite attribute uh, block, or the, the buffer, is 512 bytes. Sprite attribute table buffer. That's in RAM. So what does our SATB look like? Well, um, it's uh, 512 bytes. Uh, it's empty for now, but uh, we will fill it with uh, uh, eight uh, bytes per sprite, uh, defining its size, coordinates, etc. So here's what one individual sprite entry looks like. So there are uh, four words or eight bytes, and there's 64 of them, one for each sprite. Uh, so as you can see here, it points out the bits, uh, the bit pattern. So the first byte of each entry is the Y coordinate, and that's nine bits. And then the X coordinate, that's also nine bits. And uh, well, I should point here that uh, if you set the sprite Y and X to zero and zero, they'll be it'll be off screen, of course. So that'll accommodate for really large sprites being off screen on the left and top border. So to make uh, a sprite fully on screen, this Y coordinate needs to be set to 64, that's hex 40. And then to make uh, a sprite fully on screen in the X direction, 
this needs to be set to uh, 32 or hex 20. Okay. Uh, next is the pattern address for the sprite graphics and it's subject to that layout that I showed in the picture. And then finally the, the fourth word is uh, the various other things which are important. So starting at the zeroth bit, the palette index, so one of 16 sprite palettes, then unused bits. Finally, priority. Is it in front of the background or behind the, the background? So any non-transparent tiles will obscure the uh, sprite if you have it in low priority, like zero in background. And I, I can show that later. Okay. Uh, CGX means X width of the sprite. Is it 16 pixels wide or is it 32 pixels wide? Uh, and then CGY over here is the height, 16, 32, or 64 pixels tall. Finally, X and Y controls sprite flipping. Do you flip in the Y direction, in other words, make it upside down, or flip it in the X direction, in other words, reverse it and make it backwards? So this is this in the uh, this is the magic kit documentation that explains what the sprite attribute block entry looks like. So we will make a routine down here just to set up sprites. We draw the background. So let's set up two of those sprites and we will be writing those into our SATB and RAM first of all. So put that here. I think we can say goodbye to this. All right, so we got to write our setup sprites routine. And RAM has already been cleared, but uh, I'm going to do it again anyway. We'll clear the first byte of our sprite, sprite attribute block. Yes, I'll just call it SATB. It's a lot easier. First, it'll zero the byte in the first, or the first byte, and then it'll copy that to the next one, and then it'll just increase all the way up to the end of the block. It'll zero out the whole table. Okay, so this guy, um, we're going to set up our first sprite. Uh, I think uh, so. Forty hex is first on screen, so if we do eighty hex, it'll be forty. Uh, sorry, sixty-four pixels downwards. So our first sprite. I'm just gonna hard code these values for now, but then we can we can move it around later. My position. position. The next block is the actual pattern address, so we we'll, should do a lookup for that. So point to our VRAM. Tile number. So it'll be our bunk SP VRAM divided by 32. So that's the math that's involved for that. And then finally, it's all those other bits here Y flip, Y height, X flip, etc., etc. So I'm going to define that in binary, I think. So it's a Y flip, 
that's unused. Zero one means it's thirty two pixels high. That's unused. And so then it's probably an easier way to do this. Priority will be high, so that's one. Or it won't be flipped so be high and then let's do it here. Should be alright. Six and I'm gonna double check that. It's a lot of things to pack into <laughs> sixteen bits or, or two bytes here. So to double check, there's, oops, back on screen, Y unused, CGY, and X flip, two unused bits, uh, CGX we have flipped, oh I'm sorry, not flipped, CGX means 32 pixels wide, finally priority is one so it's over top of the background, and then, ah, I forgot. There's three unused bits. Zero, zero, zero. One, two, three unused bits, then the palette index. Phew! Okay. I'm going to copy that for our next sprite. And. That's actually, I think, what they're called in the game. Chikun. And we're going to move that red. It's going to be at the same Y position, I think. Uh, and we'll have this further along on screen horizontally. Okay. Um, so this will be correct, I think. Move 8 over. So we get the tile number plus eight, which will be the different sprite. And then this will be the same, I think. But we're not going to write to the same SATB, so it's eight bytes alone, because remember each, each of these things is eight bytes. So, plus eight, just copy that. Okay, that sets up sprites, at least in the SATB, but now we have to copy it to VRAM, so how do we do that? Well, we'll have to make a new routine that'll do that, so... And there's a already a magic kit program, uh, subroutine called update SATB, but it does it one byte at a time, and uses a loop, so you can easily do it in a block transfer. So I wrote my own routine. It's shorter and faster. So we'll branch to that subroutine. We could actually drop down below, but we might use this subroutine again. SATB to VRAM fast. So first we'll store the VRAM location to write to. So we set up the right uh, pointer and then TIA. So transfer increment alternate. The source will be incremented for each byte, and then the destination will be alternated uh, zero, you know, zeroth byte then first byte. So zero one zero one zero one. Okay. So 
the source will be SATB. The destination will be uh, the VRAM write pointer 0002. And so this will alternate 0002, 0003, so it's video data low and high. And we do 512 bytes or 0200. And this will blast the sprite to VRAM. It's bl blast processing. And that's finished there. So that's set up, and set up sprites is there, so it should work. Let's see if it assembles. All right, we have sprites on screen. Here, but as you can see, there's a problem. It's, we got two 32 by 32 sprites, um, but uh, the top half of Bonk and the top half of Chikun are together. So we have uh, read from VRAM wrong, or at least we have written from ROM to VRAM incorrectly. There they are. And why is that? Well, uh, as that picture kind of showed, if you have a 32 by 32 uh, pixel wide sprite and large pixel large sprite, uh, a, uh, one, zero, one, two, three need to be the first sprite. And then uh, four, five, six, seven need to be the second sprite. So we need to have bunk tiles here and here. Um, why is it this way? Why did it do bonk and then chikun? Well, in our include file, here are the sprites, and we just told to uh, our uh, magic kit or our assembly file to include everything. So it'll just read it linearly from left to right. So it'll read two uh, tiles for bonk, and then it'll read the two tiles for chikun, and then it'll go down here and read the last two tiles for Bonk and the last two for Chikun. So uh, if you're going to have larger sprites, larger than 16 by 16, you have to accommodate for this way that graphics files are included. You either have to draw your graphics already kind of scrambled up, which is a big pain in the ass, uh, or when you uh, include these graphics, you'll have to define them kind of one sprite at a time. You know, there's several ways to do it. You, you could also include them just as it is, like this, and then when you copy sprite to VRAM, you could rearrange the uh, sprite graphics. There's a few ways to do it. But what I'm going to do right now, uh, not the palette, the bonk sprites can't be included like this. So we'll comment that out, and we'll have two of them. So one will be for bonk, and one will be for chiku. So bonk will be starting at x, y, 0, 0. So right here, sorry, I'll keep on, on screen. The top pixel on the screen here is 0, 0. And then it'll be uh, 2 across and 2 down. 2, 2. Chikun, however, will start at pixel 32 here. So it'll be 32, 0. And then again, 2 across and 2 down. So we include these sprite graphics individually. 32, and then we'll include them individually like this, and hopefully that should copy to be around just right. Let's try again. There we go. So they are on screen, as you can see there, looking OK. So it's 
quite a uh, lot of work just getting a couple sprites showing up on screen and then moving them is another matter. So I will handle that in our next tutorial some other time. Um, let's, let's fix this up a bit. I don't like the way the scan lines move around so much. Anyway, um, the last thing that I will show is the sprite priority. Right now I have Bonk and Jikun right in front of the uh, tile map, as you can see. They're overlaid. If you set this priority bit over here to zero, so I think this is priority. Yeah, priority. If you set this to zero, it'll be behind one of the sprites. This only, sprite only will be behind the background. And so that's how you can have uh, the background occlude or cover up certain areas of sprites. There, as you can see here. So Bonk is in front of the background, but Chikun is behind, hidden behind the background. But he's still visible, of course, if you move him into a transparent tile. All right, so this has been a long video, and we did a lot. <laughs> we got a lot done. Uh, so uh, I think I will end it here. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was uh, educational and interesting. And uh, I guess next time we'll kick this into medium gear, or if not high gear. So I'll see you guys next time.